Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we're going to be checking out SDL. SDL stands for Simple Direct Media Layer and this is a game development framework, probably one of the most important game development frameworks out there and we've got SDL3 on the horizon. By the way, this video is being sponsored by and created using uh, TechSmith's Camtasia. Stay tuned later on and you can see how I make my videos and why I choose this. Alright, so back to SDL. What is SDL? Well, it is basically a layer for like abstracting away all those little bits and bobs you need to create your games. Things like the uh, audio, keyboard, mouse, joystick, and graphic creation. When you're using something like OpenGL, it's a renderer. It doesn't involve actually setting up your video card. It basically draws 3D pictures to 2D images. You still need a library like SDL to get that stuff on screen. So that is often how SDL is used. Now SDL was first invented back in 1998 by a fellow by the name of San Lantinga. Uh, he worked at a company called Loki Software which ported a number of popular games over to Linux. Uh, he's now working at Valve and Valve is one of the areas where SDL is most used. We're going to be talking about it because SDL 3 is very very close. Effectively it's here today. We'll explain exactly what I mean by that in just a second. But first how important is SDL? Well, this is the Steam DB, a breakdown of technologies used on Steam. So you can see Unity is being used to make a ton of games, uh, Unreal Engine, Game Maker, etc. So we got a ton of uh, technologies in here, but we also have a breakdown of libraries. So we come down here, SDL is used in 4,400 games. That is a lot. So uh, as you can see, there are other libraries that are used a little bit more, but it is one of the most popular libraries out there. And what kind of games are we talking about here? We're talking about big games. Stardew Valley, Hades, Portal, basically all of Valve's stuff, they use it. So Half-Life 2, Counter-Strike, Gary's Mod, Baldur's Gate 3 uses it, Dead Cells, you name it. Like look at this list of games. It's, it's insane how many applications use SDL. And you'll notice there's also some applications in here. Blender showed up. Uh, Divinity Original Sin is in here. Uh, pretty much a who's who of games, especially what you're going to notice from this list is a lot of cross-platform games. And that's where SDL really shines because it takes away the complexity of dealing with like input handling and audio handling on a platform level and gives you an API to basically handle all of these things on your own. But you can see it is used to make a ton of games and games that you've actually heard of. So SDL 3 is here. SDL 2 first started life back in 2013. So SDL uh, 3 is more or less learning from all of the changes and developments that have occurred over the last, you know, 11 plus years. And there's been a lot there. So SDL um, 2.3 is still under development, but SDL 3 is what we're all here about. And what you're going to notice here, this is the important release. Uh, so this happened uh, back in October. Uh, it's 3.1.3, but the big thing here is you've got a stable binary interface now. So people can actually start using it and it's not going to change that much. Now, when I say start using it, that's a little bit of a misnomer because even though SDL is currently in pre-release and is considered a preview, it is currently being used by games such as Dota, CS2 or Counter-Strike 2 and Steam uses it as well. So it's being used in production environments, certainly. So what do we have in SDL 3 versus 2? Well, they're down here. First off, uh, we have documentation. We'll get back to that in a second. We also have a number of example programs so you can actually run in your browser. More consistent API naming. Uh, now, the key things here are things like this. We've got a bunch more APIs that they are handling these things in a cross-platform manner that weren't handled by SDL2. Now, the big new one here is GPUs. Now, GPUs have changed a lot, uh, including like GPU compute has been added in there as well. Uh, and the way that rendering works in general has changed. So now there is this GPU API layer for cross-platform GPU handling as part of SDL3. We also have one for dialogues for doing things like file and folder selection, important things you need to do cross-platform. Uh, again, also one for handling file systems, one for handling storage, one for handling cameras, main callback. So optionally, you can run your program as uh, callbacks instead of using main, uh, which basically means that SDL would be hosting in the main for you. Uh, you have a pen API for tablets like uh, Wacom or things like the Apple Pencil, etc. Logical audio devices and audio streams, uh, default audio device. So it will automatically manage migrating to new physical hardware as devices are plugged in, ripped out, or changed. Properties API of uh, fast, flexible dictionaries of name value pairs. Again, just a useful generic way of storing data. Name value pairs is one of the most common ways of just storing generic data sets. 
color space support, a clipboard API, uh, and then uh, better keyboard input handling, a customizable virtual keyboard. So if you're using iOS or Android, high DPI uh, support has been drastically improved over SDL2, app metadata API, read write thread locks, and init state. Uh, it helps with multiple threads that might need to initialize something on demand without racing. So as you can see, the amount of low level stuff, so it's not just audio and input and rendering now, uh, you've also got things again like GPU access handling, dialogues, file system access, and so on. So basically SDL3 is taking care of more of the low level stuff that games need to do. So if you're building your own game engine from scratch, you're often going to build it on top of something like SDL3. So just like the name of this channel, Game From Scratch, the word from scratch is a bit of a misnomer in modern days. So they do have documentation of all the various different bits and bobs here. So if you wanna learn how to do uh, video handling, Handling, input handling, force feedback, audio, thread management, time management, uh, and so on. All of it is documented here. So here's the, the documentation for initialization and shutdown, for example. So full documentation available for SDL3 out there. Uh, on top of that, uh, we have a number of examples available, seeing so an idea of exactly what SDL code looks like. Should have probably mentioned this off the hop, but SDL is all about C. So it is a, that's probably why it's so incredibly good at cross-platform. So your code here is straight C. But the thing about C is it is super simple to do language bindings for it. So the previous SDL2 had a ton of language bindings available. I don't know how much SDL3 has at this point in time. It's one of those things you're gonna lose from having a slightly less mature ecosystem. Make an idea of what the source code looks like here. This is you know your classic snake game. By the way, these can all be compiled down to run uh, as web apps now. Uh, so you can see here, examples. Here are all the examples we just looked at here. I'll go into the demo folder. There is Snake, and you can get an idea of what Snake looks like. Now, I forget if I'm trying to eat. Yeah, I'm trying to eat these things, not... And then you just don't want to hit the wall. So you've played Snake before. So you get an idea. This is what... Um, some of the examples are out there. So if you want to jump in, the source code is available. You get an idea of how to create STL games. It's pretty simple. Um, if you've done any C programming, you're going to be immediately comfortable with it. Now we move on here. If you're interested in SDL itself, this is an open source project. It's under the Zlib license, which is a fairly liberal license in terms of what it allows you to do. As you can see by the size of this repository, this is an important library. The other thing you're going to want to know is the branch SDL itself, the main branch is SDL3. So if you're interested in SDL2, it is a separate branch now. So what you're seeing here, the primary branch, if you go and clone SDL, you are working with SDL3. And the key thing here with SDL, even though it is currently in preview for SDL3, uh, it does have, um, it's going to stay the same. That's the key thing about this 3.1.3 preview release. This is the version where all versions from there forth on are going to remain compatible with it, all versions of SDL3 that is. So that means when you compile for it, you could swap in another library and they're gonna be binarily compatible. On top of that, obviously the API is going to be stable as well, which basically means you can start using SDL3 now for your code going forward. So a special thanks to TechSmith Camtasia for not only sponsoring this video, but being the program I used to create it, including all of the video capture and the video editing. You can see a video I did a little while back about Ogre being edited in action. The video capture is about as easy as capture gets. And then the video editing side is about as easy as that gets as well. It does the handy things too, things like placing and animating text on screen, splicing your video together. It is quite simply the simplest tool I have ever found and is why I continue to use Camtasia for all of my work. If you wanna go ahead and check it out yourself. Use the code Game from Scratch at checkout. You can save 15% off. Thank you, TechSmith Camtasia, for sponsoring this video. And yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that is SDL3. Have you ever used it? Are you intending to use it? What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.